Have you ever photographed a rainbow and been completely disenchanted by the colors that you saw on the back of your screen or your computer monitor when you got home? Don't worry, you're not alone. Everyone else in the world that's ever photographed a rainbow has more than likely felt the same way. This is not necessarily something that you did. This is about the physics of light and the dynamics of how colors work, especially with analogous colors and how they attract to one another. In your camera, there is almost nothing you can do to make sure that those colors come out as beautiful as they do the way your eyes see them. This is the difference between the way our eyes see color and the way our camera records the scene in front of us. Now, back in November of 2024, I did a live event and I showed how I replace my rainbows. Yes, I replace my rainbows. I get rid of them. <gasps> Why would you do such a thing? Well, that's because I want to make sure that the experience that I have for the viewer is the best experience I can give them, meaning those colors are exactly like I saw them while I was on location. In order for us to understand a rainbow, though, we have to go into the nerdy science stuff. If you're the type of person who doesn't want the nerdy science stuff, which is probably about 90% of the people that come to YouTube to find a solution to a problem, you can skip the nerdy stuff and go right to the brass tacks in Photoshop, and I'll even give you the rainbows that you need to fix the rainbows in your image. But if you want the nerdy stuff, let's jump into that first. Okay, so what I have here for you is a little demonstration image here of what a rainbow might look like in various places in landscape photography. So we have it up against what could be possibly clouds, a more neutral type of tone. We have it on a blue sky, which is typically where you see a rainbow passing through, or even over top of shadows, like you might see a rainbow as it passes through uh, maybe some of the shadows in a waterfall or something like that, because we do see rainbows there too. Now what this is gonna demonstrate is how we see a rainbow in any given type of light. And some of these might be Blake theories. Some of it might actually be science and physics. I have no idea. I, I got my degree in what I call finger painting. So um, you take this with a grain of salt. <laughs> I'm no physicist. However, when I look at this, uh, I can, because of what I know about a camera and what I know about the human eye, we can make a differentiation about what these colors actually look like to a camera and what they look like to the human eye. So when you see a rainbow, when your eyes see a rainbow, they see Roy G. Biv, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That's what we've been taught since the beginning of time when we were in school, in grade school, right? Now this changes though. These colors will change based on how they're photographed. And that has to deal with white balance, because what is white balance? White balance is your camera's way of taking a, uh, an assessment of what you want to be neutral or what you're telling the camera to be neutral, whether you change the white balance yourself or if you choose to shoot an auto white balance as I tend to do. So when I shoot an auto white balance, I'm very cognizant of what's happening to my colors at any given time. This is one of those things that people struggle with is the idea behind a color cast and a color grade. A color cast typically comes from your white balance not being accurate. Color grade is a decision you make to apply color to the image. In looking at this image, we have to assess what our camera is going to do when the white balance changes. I have a lamp here from LumaCube. I love this lamp. The reason why I like this lamp is because I can change it from various temperatures. It helps me assess my prints so that after I print my image, I can tell what it's going to look like in neutral light, in cool light, and in warm light. So watch these colors as we change this to a cooler light. Okay? When we change this cooler, Look at how it almost neutralizes these colors over here almost completely. And these colors start to come out. What's happening here is these colors are closer to blue than they are to yellow. So these colors under a blue light are going to shine very well. These colors under a blue light or switch to a blue or white balance will not be as strong. Now, if we switch this back to its neutral light source, your eyes are not going to be used to it. And watch as these colors change when we get to a neutral light source. Okay, it already feels warmer, doesn't it? That's only because we're pulling away from that blue white balance or the blue color temperature that we put on our lamp. Now watch these colors as we transfer to a yellow white balance. So here we go. Look at how these colors almost kind of blend in, especially over here in the shadows. They kind of blend in with that shadow, whereas these colors that are on the right side of the rainbow that are more analogously closer to yellow shine very well. We need to understand that what we take that picture of is basically a combination of what we're metering for and what our camera is white balancing for. So if our white balance goes to yellow, this is what's going to happen to our rainbow. If it goes to blue, this is what's going to happen to our rainbow. Watch those colors transition as I push this button up and down, bluer, neutral, warmer. 
okay? Now this is the exact reason why I cannot trust my camera and what it tells me is the colors of the rainbow. And that's why when I'm struggling with processing my rainbows, I just get rid of them and remove them completely and add my own rainbow. So let's jump into Photoshop and look at how we can replace these rainbows with the actual colors that we would see in a rainbow, but in our photograph. All right, so now we're in Photoshop. You can see that this image that I processed, and as I processed it, it got more and more blue because I really enjoyed the blue nature of these clouds. Well, as this image got more blue, look at these colors. Knowing what you know now about rainbows, what's wrong? Well, you probably spotted it right away. We can barely make out the red. We can barely make out the orange or the yellow. Our greens and our blues are looking pretty good, but indigo and violet are pretty much missing completely. So this, has a, this is a combination of my white balance while I was on location and the processing and the color grading that I'm doing to this image as I'm working on it. That's why when I do something like this and replace that rainbow, it's typically the last thing I do in my workflow so that I can ensure that this rainbow does not get affected by any of my color grading at all. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we get to this point? So the first thing that I do is I make a new layer and I put the remove tool on here. So I'm gonna put this right here so you can kind of see how this works. I grab the remove tool and in the remove tool, I make sure that generative AI is off. I also make sure that this setting is depressed. That will ensure that I can work on all the visible layers on its own individual layer so I don't have to work on the image destructively. I really just want this to take what's in the image and use that. You can make a sky selection to try and protect these trees, but even if I remove these trees and different trees up here, as long as they look pretty close to my original image, I'm not too concerned. So what I'm gonna do before that is I'm gonna press Command or Control R, and that's gonna give me rulers. And with these rulers, I can go right inside this space and I can kind of draw boundaries for myself to see what and where this rainbow should be hitting. So it should be about right here in that corner. It should go from here to here. And then it should go into this corner all the way down to here. That's just for me to really know where I need to place my rainbow as a guide. Now I can go ahead and erase that rainbow. So with my remove tool, with generative AI off, I'm just gonna go ahead and click right here, press and hold shift and click down to about here, and then shift click over to here and then up to here. That just makes sure that I maintain a straight line and then I'll press enter. Now the remove tool is great. It should do a wonderful job of getting rid of this, but if it doesn't, just go ahead and continue to paint on here. Now I do have this on its own layer, as you will note here. The reason why this is on its own layer is because I wanna be able to turn this on and off and be able to see what it is in my image that was before as I work on this. So I'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller and it's having some trouble with these trees here and a little bit of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this a couple times until I get it looking somewhat close to my original image. And I'm not too concerned if it fabricates extra stuff for these trees, as long as they're connected and that's not. So I'll just remove this and maybe even a little bit of this guy right here. Okay, and then press enter. All right, so that's decent enough. I'm not too concerned because unless you're really zooming in there, you're not gonna be able to tell. So my rainbow is relatively removed. What I have here in my libraries are four rainbows. I'm giving you a circle rainbow. And if you want these rainbows, just go ahead in the description below, there's gonna be a link. If you give me your email address, I'll give you my rainbows. Uh, you know, I'm a marketer at the end of the day. So here's the deal. I'm giving you a circular rainbow for those bigger wide angle shots, a double rainbow, a bent rainbow to kind of simulate the uh, structure of a rainbow and a straight rainbow. Now for this, it's kind of almost straight. So I'm gonna use the straight rainbow from now. I'm gonna double click this. And this is a very simple process. It's so simple, it feels like cheating. I mean, I guess we kind of are cheating, but whatever, that's what you do when you use Photoshop. So I'm gonna press V for the move tool. And I'm just gonna move this right onto this document. Okay, and then I can close this down because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna press Control and Spacebar and then right click and fit on screen. That's Command and Spacebar if you're on a Mac. And I'm just gonna rotate this along that line there. So this is a little bit big. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller until it starts to fit and I'll thin it out. So it's about the size of the rainbow that I had before. And I'll just make sure that that's going about that general direction that my other rainbow was going. And I can even stretch this out and make it a little bit longer. I'm just pressing and holding shift on these edges to get this to fit and maintain, okay? So I'll put that right there just like that. I'll press Command and Control H to get rid of these guides. Now, the reason why this is on a black background is I can just do something very simple and go to the screen blend mode. Now, when I go to the screen blend mode, this already looks like a pretty natural looking rainbow, doesn't it? It doesn't look fabricated. It doesn't look fake. It looks actually pretty good. Now, the thing that's not working in my favor here is that I've got a line that kind of ends here on this rainbow and ends right here. 
So I'm just gonna feather that in. I'm gonna make a mask on here, and now I'll just press B for my brush tool, and I'll make sure that I'm brushing with black. I'm gonna start out with a small brush, I'm gonna zoom in here, and just kinda hit this along the edge like that, okay? Just like that. And then I'll go to this side, and then hit this right here, just to get rid of that line, okay? Now once that line is gone, I'm gonna go ahead and B for my brush tool, make it a little bit bigger, and then just hit it right on the outside so it really kind of feathers into those clouds. Looking at this, I feel like my rainbow is a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna press V for the move tool and then use my left arrow key to move that over to the left. And that's looking pretty good. Now, as I look at this, it does look like there's a slight bend or a slight warp to my rainbow. So in order for me to stretch this rainbow or warp it, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and feather this in a little bit more into that cloud right there. Since I'm, I moved it, I'm gonna feather that in a little bit more. Okay, just like that. And then feather this in down here just a little bit more like that. And then I'll unlink this mask. I do that because when I warp this rainbow, I want the mask and where I've placed my, my brush to be the same. So I'll click on this and I'll go to edit and I'll go to transform and then warp. Now with this, I'll press control zero or command zero. And if I just click right in the middle here and just grab and push this up in that direction, you'll see that it kind of warps my rainbow to give it a slight bend or a slight arc. Okay, that looks good. So now I'll move this back to where it was, V for the move tool and just move this right back to about where that rainbow was originally. And then with my removed rainbow, and now I have my rainbow in almost the exact same position that the other rainbow was in, but guess what? I've got the colors of the rainbow the way the rainbow was supposed to look. What? That's interesting. I usually don't get calls in the middle of my YouTube videos. I mean, let me see if this is important. Oh, gosh. It's Gavin. Hey, Gavin. What's up, man? What, what you got? <laughs> Hi, Blake. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if you'd uploaded those files for the course, because like, I'm, I'm a little bit behind with all the editing, so I just need those files. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually in the middle of recording some of my YouTube channel. Can you give me like 20 minutes? Yeah. What, what are you doing? Um, I don't know if I really want to show you. What are you talking about? Well, I'm. Well, here you go. What's that? I'm just showing them how to make a better rainbow. Oh no, you can't. No, you can't. You, you're not going to use that on like one of your channel videos, are you? Yeah. I, well, that's what I intended. Oh no, you can't use all the good stuff. We've got. To, we've got to save that for the course. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, dude, like. The thing is, though, in the course, we go into a lot more depth, right? And then we even do that really cool trick where we show them, like, how to spot a fake with a double rainbow. Well, you're not going to put that on YouTube, though, are you? No, I'm not going to give everything away. Oh, all right. Well, I guess it's not a problem if you, you've you got to save the really good stuff for the course, because we, we've got to charge money for this, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Anyway, listen, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was, is there any chance you could just give me an advance on the cost sales because like th that food is quite expensive in Montana. All right, bye. Man, working with that guy has proven to be very difficult. Yes, Gavin Hardcastle, affectionately known as Photo Tripper on YouTube, we're working together on a course called Make Great Shots where we're collaborating. Yes, it, it, it's actually going a lot better than I thought on several images from where we were on location from the composition all the way through the post-processing. And we're gonna show you a lot of awesome tips and tricks with rainbows that go even further than this one. And while we are collaborating on everything, we do have to have a little hint of competition. So also in that description below, there's gonna be a link to a page where you can vote on two images. It's a completely blind vote, but there's competition involved. We're gonna have a prize at the end of this for either Gavin or myself. And you get to judge who gets that in the blind vote. If you'd like these rainbows and you wanna get better rainbows in your image, go ahead and click in the description below, click on that link, and you can download these rainbows and use them in your workflow. You can refer back to this video on how to do the Photoshop process. It's relatively simple. The screen blend mode on these and just feather it in with the mask. You can get intricate with it if you want by using the warp tool, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. The thing is here, we want to make sure that our rainbows have all of the colors of the spectrum in them. A rainbow is not yellow, 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 light blue. A rainbow is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. It's really imperative that if we want our viewers to have the best experience of our rainbows, like we experience them, that we put them in and we make them look just as beautiful as they did while we are on location. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to make difficult things in Photoshop seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.